This is a Skywatcher Sky Travel 102 uh, millimeter telescope. It's a refractor and uh, it has its own uh, EQ1 equatorial mount. But I want to use it in altazimuth mount from the windowsill. As you know, we do astronomy from the windowsill. Astronomy for windowsill. And so I've adopted it to use the virtuoso mount, which is really good. The sky watcher again. I've uh, used the Losmandi uh, dovetail bar, very sturdy, very good, to attach this. The attachment uh, mount bar of that uh, EQ1 is actually attached to the mount head. You can remove it practically, or with difficulty if you want. So I just use these rings, mounted tube rings, uh, with it, their own screw on the bolt holes of this Losmandi. And this is the lens of the telescope. I hope you can see. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and let us find the target and look at it. Okay, it's the view through the my uh, uh, Ostara 40 millimeter uh, wide angle and um, eyepiece. This is what you see. There is a very good eye relief with this the eyepiece. And the telescope itself also. We are now looking at the situation that normally any telescope will have some chromatic aberration. It's almost non-existent. number for this telescope means the focal length of the telescope divided by the diameter of the objective which is in this case 102 millimeter and the focal length is 500 millimeter the F number then is 4.9 makes it quite a wide angle for such aperture it is really quite wide angle so in a normal way you'd expect a lot of aberration, chromatic aberration, and also probably even um, spherical aberration. But in this telescope, it seems they have done the two lenses, which is a doublet of this le refractor, they form it, they have a space between them, it, uh, and that spacing has actually, uh, in a way, has improved the aber chromatic aberration in a very good way. So, okay, I'm now using a 10 millimeter orthoscopic eyepiece as you can see, the image is really good and crisp. I don't see... I see a slightly purple fringing, but you may not notice it. In the corner of the image, you may see some violet coloring. But other than that, it's good. So, probably we can use this. Any of these fruits you see there will be the size of the Jupiter or Saturn, with the rings of, of it, of course, in the viewing. Unless you say that they may be too bright, and the brightness may ruin the image. Well, I think this is a good value. Considering that for buying an apochromatic uh, refractor or even a maxative, you have to pay probably from anything between four or five times to ten times more than the price for this. I bought it second hand for around, uh, yeah, I think uh, 50 pound uh, with everything, you know, everything in the box was there. And uh, we will put it in good use first. And for this new one is around 189, 200 pounds. So it's good value even at second hand. And uh, then compare it with the 2000 pound that you may have to pay for an upper chromatic telescope of this aperture, 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds sometimes, uh, something in between. So good value in general, and compare the size of the tube aperture with this tonic water that I have here. And I will turn it around so we can see the lens. Okay, that's the lens. It needs a bit cleaning, but uh, more than that, 
the lens is good. It's quite large. It has a lens cap. It has the eyepiece. It has uh, everything that it needs to start your working and the planets and the stars. I'm looking forward to have a clear sky. Probably not tonight because, uh, as you can see, it's doom and gloom and uh, cloudy. But I will try it on Jupiter, Saturn. Deep sky object probably will be the best usage for this telescope. Like star clusters, galaxies, it has a big objective lens. So it's four inch telescope, reflector, very good, capable, and uh, hopefully it will be performing for us. And this is the view toward a few flowers in the garden. So again, you can see the clear clarity of the image. I cannot tap the f my my hand on the picture, but you can see it be. It's almost in focus, at least from my eye. That was the view through the otoscopic eyepiece. Now I'm back to the wide angle 40 millimeter Ostara focal eyepiece. Of course, I've not changed the focal point focus, but if I change it now, probably you can see more clear. All in all, I think the optics of this telescope is really good. This eyepiece is brilliant, Ostara. This, this is a wide, the most used eyepiece that I have. I have probably 50 eyepieces, but this is the best I can use. It's cheap. I bought this from probably 15 pound or something. New, you can buy it to around 20 pound. And I have two of these, so if I just use it. And this telescope probably. And really good, really good telescope, wide angle views. And these are the fruits I'm looking at. So which one has yellow bits? That was the one I was looking at. Okay. And the window closes. This is my Sky Watcher 102, Sky Travel 102 millimeter. That's four inch. Uh, Telescope. Here's a lens cap. I'm removing it. This is the lens. I thought I saw something which may be the initial stages of a fungal growth. So I'm just trying to clean it to see what will happen. If it is outside surfaces. I remove the, the shield here and we go. Let's see. I decided to op open the lens completely and just do the other side of it also. If it needs, of course. Let me just blow some air. It doesn't have any bad thing here in this side. But I just uh, use a blower just to see how it will affect it. The, the image quality, I'm really impressed. And the ease of movement. And you can see almost I can point it to the zenith. And the arrangement is really good. It's better than the other telescope that I have. You can almost point it to the zenith. The angle of this is now around 75 degrees, yeah, and things like Vega, if it is real high, you can look at this, and nice. I'm happy with this Los Mandy, really saved the day, without this Los Mandy. That's from my mid uh, uh, LX90 uh, guider scope for that, so. It has its own rings and this um, Vixen or called Lowe's Panty dovetail. Really helpful. The lens. And I noticed that when I was removing this uh, dew shield, I noticed that the whole lens was also twisting. So probably I can do the other side of it. But I will not risk it. I'll just do first this side. Oh, I'm quite impressed by the ease of use of this uh, um, cleaning of this telescope. You put the lens assembly, it can be screwed, everything inside is nice. The color, look at this glittery color, they're very beautiful. 
and they have been built to be easy maintained and at the same time easy to work with. Okay, I'm now going to put the um, dew shield in on it. As you can see, the dew shield has also some felt around it. I'm going to blow some air into this and clean it also. Okay, I'll put this now back. Let me have a look before putting the lens cap on. And I'll use the eyepiece just to see how it is. So, this is the spray, Butter Optical Wonder, and this is the lens. Now, let me spray. Okay, one layer, one puff was enough. So, I'm going to use that uh, cleaner just to clean it. It oh, really looks nice, this fabric. Okay. Moving gently across the surface. Mm. It's clean. As far as you can see, it's clean. Okay, the lens is perfectly clean now. And now I'm going to put it back on the telescope. Okay, that's a blower, again from China. And I just blow some air. I don't think the roof it has ever been opened. I don't see anything inside this. And what I thought I saw as a fungi is probably gone. Nothing here. This is a Skywatcher Sky Travel 102 uh, millimeter telescope. It's a refractor and uh, it has its own uh, EQ1, the quadrilateral mount. But I want to use it in altazimuth mount from the windowsill. As you know, we do astronomy from the windowsill, astronomy for windowsill. And so I've adopted it to use the virtuoso mount, which is really good, the Skywatcher again. I've uh, used the Los Mandy uh, dovetail bar, very sturdy, very good, to attach this. The attachment uh, mount bar of that uh, EQ1 is actually attached to the mount head. You cannot remove it practically, or with difficulty if you want. So I just use these rings, mounted tube rings, uh, with it, their own screw on the bolt holes of this Los Mandy. And this is the lens of the telescope. I hope you can see. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and let us find the target and look at it. Just before that, it's a good opportunity to see the baffles and uh, light stops inside the tube. Quite impressive stops. And uh, yeah, that's nice. Better than what I thought. Okay, do I recommend the uh, Bother Optical Wonder? Yes, definitely. It's a good one. He didn't use much of the um, spray also. Yeah, definitely. Um, a few puff was enough for this old telescope. And, uh, yeah. If you get it, get this also, this coat also. It's very nice. You can wash it with the, softly, gently with the, some soap or liquid soap. And dry it and it will be as good as new. Sharp. That is what we have to call Chinese technology. Best image quality. Forget about the Japanese telescopes or American telescopes. China is the next best. Or is the first best now.
actual image that I can see. And what you will see is what is it uh, through the telescope after this. This is the image of the moons behind the cloud. Moon behind the cloud through the Sky Watcher Star Travel 102 with the um, eyepiece which is 40 millimeter in focal length. I must say I must quite, I'm quite impressed by the quality of the image. And now this is the through the bothers classic uh, orthoscopic eyepiece, ten millimeter. <laughs> can see a lot of details in the full disk of the moon. I'm really impressed with the quality of this telescope. I expect a lot of chromatic aberration, I don't see anything. I see the face of a fat man in the moon.
Okay, now I'm using the uh, Skywatcher Nirvana. Yeah, from a thick layer of the cloth, behind the thick layer of the cloth. Using my mobile phone to photograph it. Three point two millimeter eyepiece. You see much details. I came back to the Brother Order Classic. Just amazing the clarity. Amazing clarity as you can see here. Oh, there's a bird flying. Or is there an insect on the lens? Aliens on the moon.
the cutting in the sea of the north of the Imbrium, where the Jura Mountains is, uh, what is called actually the part near the Caucasian Mountains, is the uh, Alpine Valley. Amazing. Yeah, this is lower part so when you see the a parallel dotted line as if parallel to that mountain inward to the, um, the sea of rains is where the Apollo 15 landed in the mountains. Try to zoom one down. Yeah, although it is daylight, I have changed the setting of the video so it looks darker than what it actually is. But where I'm uh, making this video using a mid uh, LX200 Classic as a superior object to anything that I've seen. And it has the slow motion controls unlike the LX90. And that makes it a bit possible to actually move the images. As you can see, I'm removing the micro movements of the telescope if it's possible. Yeah, the cuckoo, cuckoo always singing. 